I'm Rebecca Corner. Today's biofill tuning video is one that is really near and dear to my heart. Today's topic is less of the moreness. Um, and I'll talk about what I mean by moreness as I get going here. Uh, I'm gonna start with grounding us all interesting right when I started this video my eyebrows started doing this weird twitch hmm. I wonder what's furrowing my brow or what I'm having a hard time seeing clearly oh, oh it just it just went away so yay okay so here we go Whew, yeah okay wow there's the earth star okay moreness so this topic is really near and dear to my heart. I came up with the expression moreness when I was in a private tuning session with, um, with a client with whom I've been working for some time. And in that session, we talked about the quality in her that was sort of bred into her by her parents, in specific, in her case, um, around Uh, this basically a compulsion to always have to do more or to never sort of rest or celebrate or whatever after achievement that she was always moving on to the next thing and then even while doing something there was just this constant sort of running push in her around how could I do it better or how could I be more of service or how can I help more people or whatever and and I don't remember a lot of specifics from sessions except for when they either apply to me or apply to the collective, then I'm sort of allowed, if you will, to retain these things. And the moreness concept is something that I, as an individual, very much <laughs> suffer under. And, and the as I moved through several weeks, and really, I guess it was a couple of months ago that we came up with this moreness concept, it's just come up in a lot of different um, sessions with a lot of different people. And so this is something, and, and as, I, as I have been sort of noodling around with this idea, I realize all the myriad of ways that I labor under these delusions of I've always got to be more. And then just last week I saw on uh, an Instagram meme of a psychologist who I follow that there was this list of things that I am more than, ironically, I'm bigger than. Um, and one of them was I am more than my ability to be better and do better all the time. And I thought, okay, well, th that's her words for, for this whole moreness concept. And for those of us, I am certainly included in this, for those of us who, like a deep dive, are perpetually trying to sort of be the best person that we can be on a daily basis, at what point does, does it um, go from this sort of beautiful, expansive intention and devolves into this sort of whip-cracking, self-deprecating, grueling, nose-to-the-grindstone task and chore uh, sort of lifestyle that you're that you punted yourself into. And so I really wanted to tune today <sighs> because I have been experiencing my moreness so acutely in my life. And I just thought, if I'm, if I'm noticing it, then I know I'm not the only one, not only because of my private sessions and the things that are coming from out of various other clients' mouths, but also it's got to be up in the collective. Um, and with the social injustices that are finally being addressed and um, with the health pub and public safety protocols, and all that it's bringing up in everyone uh, in terms of some of the emotionality around what is safe and what does safety mean to me and the differences therein 
between person to person. I wanted to tap into this moreness and more than anything, really kind of see if I could dial it down a little bit. Um, because I know a great many people, if you are like me, it's, it's easy to get uh, punted into sort of overdrive and to never let up. And that does not buy you in betterment. It never has and it never will. And that's a personal lesson I need to keep learning. And so that is really the focus of this tuning because I know I'm not the only person who needs a reminder of that out here. <clears throat> and it's, it's interesting because the, the, so the collective energy, the earth star that I am really grounding to. So I'm trying to get the, the energy flow from the center of the earth to, to come up through the energy body of the collective energies that are making um, the field that I'm tuning in this video. And the minute I suggested that we turn down the volume on this moreness drive, it was like the whole energy body, the whole energy field just sort of tightened up like, what do you mean? No, I can't, I can't do any less. If I do any less, I, it means I'm a terrible person. If I do any less, then, then, then I'm not going to save the world or I might, I might not save one person or blah, 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 blah. I was like all this. Blah, 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 blah. Ah, okay. Whew. Let's just dial that down. <sighs> really bringing up a lot of emotion. I'm kind of wanting to cry a little bit. It's, it's as if the suggestion that if we turn down the volume on the moreness, it brought up this panic. It's kind of in my stomach that feels like I'm kind of having a hard time breathing. Everybody take a nice big deep breath. Dial down the volume of a song doesn't intrinsically change the song, nor does it make it any less beautiful. It just reduces the decibels that it's hitting your eardrum. So for us to dial down and to come to a sense of ease around our drive to do more and be more, it doesn't change that drive. It's just going to make it so it's not screaming in our ears like a drill sergeant, okay? Huh, there you go. That's right. To turn down the volume of this isn't going to make us into crappy, self-involved jerks. <laughs> um, it just means that that screaming noise in our ear isn't going to be deafening us as we move beautifully through our life. There we go. All right, there we go. Whew. And I really want to ground into that. For something does, to not be loud, it doesn't mean that it's going away. It just means we don't have to suffer under the volume. There's just a real, really profound sense of tightness here. There is so much concern that if uh, now the, the sensation that's coming up is if I turn down the volume, 
on my sort of overachiever qualities, um, then I'll never earn it's, it, 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 then I'll never earn the right to relax. Wow, wow. There's really a lot. Uh, there's really a lot of emotion in this. Our the collective Earth Star is so is so um, gripped up and tight. It's like it's uh, it's like we're kids on it's like we're kids on a bus going on our all-day field trip and our parents packed us a lunch and told us right before we got on the bus don't lose grip of the lunch you know if you won't you're going to be so hungry by the end of the day and it's like it's like we're sitting there just gripped onto our little lunch bags like gee, like white knuckles like kind of looking from side to side like I want to have fun and I want to go on the field trip but if I lose my lunch it's all going to go south I don't know it's it's like, gotta get it right, gotta get it right, gotta get it right. <sighs> it's, um... <sighs> we all have the right to relax. We, we all, um... Uh, rest is a natural ebb and flow. It is a state that always and cyclically comes around. It goes. Sometimes a person is not at rest. Sometimes an animal is not at rest. But sometimes we are. It will all, it comes and it goes. The lyrics, ain't no rest for the wicked, money don't grow on trees. Ain't no rest for the wicked, I'll die when I, I sleep when I die. Shoot, I can't remember the lyrics, but yeah, there's like this sort of baked in sort of fundamentalist puritanical idea. Like if I, if I turn down the volume on my mourness, it makes me wicked, wicked. No rest for the wicked. Uh, Y'all, you can be a good person and do a human amount of stuff. Like, we all don't have to be superheroes all day, every day. And one can fight social injustice and inequalities and anti-humanitarian <laughs> actions globally and still eat and sleep sometimes. Like you can't, you can't overpower these forces if you never rest. <sighs> yeah. Okay, now at least. <laughs> but it's like, it's such a sliver, <laughs> there we go. Okay, well the energy's running up. I'm gonna come around to the top part, but um, it's like I had to sneak it in. It's like, okay, the, I can get the whole energy body to ground if I convince them that they can do more good <laughs> if they rest. Um, but then it's like, okay, so I have to get you grounded so that, honestly, so that we can just sort of dial it down a little bit more even. And really, can we believe that? So as we connect to the sun star here, <sighs> boy, that really brings up a, a, a concept of a crisis of faith. It, uh, You know, one thing about this whole COVID experience, so we are now however many months into COVID, 
This is being filmed in Georgia, which remains a hot mess of a hot spot um, for any number of reasons. And it, it doesn't even matter why, it just is. Um, and one thing that really came about in my personal experience of, of the COVID pandemic is that it really underscores the absolute truth of the expression, we are all in this together. If, if nothing, this viral pandemic has unified the earth in a way that I think has never been done before because everybody's experience of this is the same, which is that it is a threat. It isn't, an, it isn't a positive for anybody like wars or some other things have been. Um, it, it's pretty much a downer on every continent. Uh, and the real beauty and universal truth of we are all in this together and in that way we are all one um, as it ties into this concept of moreness, when we dial the volume down so that our ears aren't sore from us harping on ourselves to be more and do more and, and fight the good fight more, um, I'd really like to suggest as paradigm and a belief is that if we are kind to self, then that's us helping one more person than we were helping before. Because generally all of us folk who, who fall victim to the moreness concept, um, we're almost invariably short shrifting ourselves. And so if we really believe that we have to do quote God's job and save the whole world and that and that everybody's wellness is riding on our shoulders, then let us start with us. <laughs> to quote Michael Jackson, start with the man in the mirror. Be kind to yourself. And then, and then when you are rested and well resourced, and then if you go and take up the reins to fight up the fight, the good fight, then you you've already made the global landscape a better place because you're better resourced. And then from this well-resourced place, which already made the world a better place, you will then be able to even make it more better <laughs> because you'll have everything that you need to authentically and thoroughly lead the charge of, of, whatever, of whatever mission or service or good deed or act of compassion or kindness or support that you that you were going to do um, you, you will have more to give That the energy body is really sort of activated and the two terminus points, the two po poles are turned on and activated and I feel like the energy is running through them. I'm gonna do a little focus around the, the core of the collective energy body and I'd like to talk about I'd like to talk about the strength of the field because in this whole we are one except we are also individuals, um, a lot of people who don't understand about electromagnetic fields um, subscribe to this idea we're all one. We are both individual and we are interconnected. 
And so some people will subscribe to the idea when I take care of self, because self is part of the collective, I am in fact helping everybody else when I take care of myself. So this is a concept that people can really get on board with sometimes if you really work with them. But then in the short term, it gets really lost because you just think, well, but I'm, I'm fine today and even though I'm a little bit tired and a little bit hungry and a little bit whatever, but this person is so much worse off, then we start playing this relativity game, right? So-and-so is so much where the, you know, this group of people, this disenfranchised group really, really needs us, uh, really, really needs me and they have it worse than me. Um, so I've got to then start overextending myself pronto. Okay, it doesn't work like that. Um, sometimes in a really short term or under dire circumstances, it can. Uh, but as an ongoing way of thinking and living, it doesn't work for very long. So I really want to talk about when a person takes care of self. Yes, as a member of the collective, if I take care of self, I am taking care of the whole. But there's also this super powerful element of when I take care of myself, not only is this concrete thing better tended to, the entire six foot periphery around me all the time is clearer, sharper, more pleasant, um, more open, more compassionate, and so everybody, even those who I don't help or whatever, but everybody I come into contact with feels the benefit of my self-care from six feet away because my field is clearer. And the number one determining agent on a particle is, is the field. And this is from biology, molecular biology, that, that phrase, that knowing, that truth. And in the macro sense, if you think of a, as a, of a person as a particle, then the more we surround ourselves with people whose fields are clear and happy and well-resourced and well-rested, then everything's gonna go get better, gonna feel better. And we didn't even do anything. Like you don't have to help somebody carry in their groceries. If you are around them and your field is clearer and better, then they'll feel better whether you did an act of service or an act of kindness or not, um, or did anything more. So the power of the field to invisibly improve not only your life experience, but absolutely everybody around you, your neighbors, the cars driving by on the street, the rando folks you pass, um, the rando folks that you see on Zoom. I mean, for those of you who aren't leaving and not aren't seeing people in, in real life at any distance at all, um, your field gets transmitted when you're on speaking on the phone, when you're on video calls and video chats on your computer and iPad, any of these things. It all translates and it all transmits and it's all very, very real. One of my teachers talks a lot about, um, about what is the naturally arising an, um, antidote to anything that's a little staticky that you're trying to tune and and relieve or cohere or harmonize she always one of her sort of running questions is okay well what's the antidote what would be the the fix to that to this moreness thing and in that in the collective energy body i'm hearing i'm hearing joy uh, I also felt, again, just that sense of ease, like if things are at ease, not even necessarily easy, but if you're at ease, you can still keep doing, um, 
but it's not a draining doing. It's just an easeful doing. And I'm really, I'm kind of working the periphery around the solar plexus region, which is our personal power. And while I'm not dropping in a bunch of energy right now, it's, it's as if, it's as if once I plugged the system into the terminals, it's as if this sort of central chakra point really asked that its atmosphere that the periphery of the atmosphere around the solar plexus um, kind of be treated as its own micro cellular membrane and that the outside of it, it's like the outside of it really wants to be conditioned so that we have enough gumption to feel really what's come the word is that we have the confidence it's that our it's it's that we carry the internal confident knowing that i'm okay that what i'm doing is enough i don't have to do more but i always can oh it becomes ah options that's that's the antidote that's arising is is this whole sort of Kind of easy, lighthearted, optional choice point. I can do more. I could rest. I could take a little break. And then after the break, I could do a little bit more if it feels right. Or if it doesn't, that's also fine. I don't know. It's like all of a sudden it becomes a playful choice. Playful choices. Wow, what if you got to spend your whole life just choosing? how you'd like to play next. Oh, yes. Woo! Oh, yes. Let's drop that in. How would I like to play next? I don't have to do more. I don't need to be better. How do I want to play next? Wow. It's not necessarily going to change what you do, but boy, doesn't that sound different? I like it. I'd like to play for the rest of my Monday. That sounds great. <sighs> nice. All right, I'm going to drop all, all of that gorgeous, lighthearted, easy <sighs> option frequency. Let's really bake that into our bellies, that knowing, that confidence, that surety, assurance, sure, sureness. <sighs> hmm. Now I'm hearing, I think it's a Donna Summer song, Enough is Enough. <laughs> enough is enough. Like, it's a, you, we are enough, we do enough, there will always be more, and to be enough leaves us enough room to do, to do enough another day. <laughs> Hmm. All right, I will carry that sentiment going forward. Nice. Nice job, you guys. I'm gonna 
go ahead and wrap up the field real quick. Wow. All right. Thank you. That's the end of my tuning on moreness. And it seems like the antidote that arose was playful choice. Uh, I know I'm really looking forward to a lot more play in my week and in my life. I hope this was good for you. And uh, please visit RebeccaCarner.com if you'd like to contact me or if you'd like more information on tuning.